All right. Hi, Mike. Hey, look at this. I'm here with uh, Brad Weston of Renewed Vision. Uh, you probably heard of that little program called Pro Presenter, and uh, they've been teasing us for months now. Months. Uh, well, weeks. weeks. Anyway, with uh, the new Pro Presenter 5, and so this is the first time we're actually getting to see a little bit of Pro Presenter 5. So Brad's going to walk us through some of the new great features and see what's new. Yeah, we're really excited about it. Uh, WFX uh, is the first time it's actually been a public showing of Pro Presenter 5 in its entirety, or mostly entirety. Um, and we were able, we were honored to get actually get uh, the best presentation software and best overall video product of 2011 for awesome. WFX. So we're pretty excited about it. So yeah, just a quick overview. <coughs> One of the main features that we've added is uh, that's been long called for is Planning Center Online integration. What that allows you to do is you can connect to your Planning Center Online database by going to a new Planning Center Online uh, playlist, and then you can actually navigate and find whatever that worship service is that you're gonna you're going to link to. And whenever you do that, it actually show up like this. So you'd actually see uh, all the different elements of your worship service, including uh, the message and those items that are not going to be pro presenter specific. And what's cool is whenever you bring these things in, it'll automatically link uh, different files to uh, if, if, a, if you're doing in your worship set, if you're, if you're singing a song that actually exists in your pro presenter library, it'll automatically link it to the uh, Planning Center online uh, data file that you've actually downloaded, the playlist that you've actually downloaded. And for those that don't, it actually has a drop zone for where you can actually drop your ProPresenter documents right within there. So to kind of demonstrate uh, further how this actually works, further, when you actually have those Planning Center on, I'm sorry, when you have a ProPresenter document that matches the uh, Planning Center Online schedule, it'll actually upload your ProPresenter file, should you choose to, right up to Planning Center Online so you can actually uh, set up your, your presentations, uh, your worship set and whatnot at home, and then whenever you actually go to the church, it'll download all that same content right within ProPresenter. So it's pretty cool. Um, so to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to just get rid of the Wonderful Cross, kind of start over from scratch here. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to go to Song Select, whoops, and I'm going to do a search for the Wonderful Cross, since I don't have this presumably in my library. And then, like always, in ProPresenter 4, we have the ability to actually bring in text files from Song Select or from text files themselves. But we've added uh, significantly new functionality within the ProPresenter 5 uh, text importer. So for one, you can specify that you want the slides delimited by a line break. But oftentimes, you want to have more than one line per slide. So now we actually allow you to choose how many lines per slide that you want. So by choosing two lines per slide, I can then choose the resolution that I want to use, what kind of category this uh, presentation is, whether it's a song. I'll also choose it's a song. And then I can choose where that destination is going to be. But we've also added this new text reflow editor, sort of an intermediary step as you're editing or when you're importing documents. Since I chose that I wanted to have two lines per slide, I don't want the, the last line of the verse to be on the same slide as the chorus. So I want to be able to, to monitor and see exactly what this is going to look like. So what this actually does, this reflow editor shows us uh, basically a text editor on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we see what all the slides are going to look like when I complete the import process. So if I want to, I can just very quickly move that, you know, that I may truly live to a new slide just by saying insert break. And if I want to actually combine two slides, I just have to put the cursor before the word all and hit delete. And that just combines those two slides. And I see the results in real time over here on uh, my slide previews over here. So when I get this exactly the way that I want it, I can then just say import, and that's going to import it into my library. So here's the wonderful cross, in which case I can actually link it to the Planning Center Online just by going to that song within my Planning Center Online playlist and dragging the wonderful cross from my library right into it. So again, that's now going to upload that to Planning Center Online if I have such privileges and if I choose to do so. So you'll notice that when I actually brought this in, it had it automatically labeled uh, the verse the three verses based on my labels that I have specified in my preferences. It missed chorus because uh, Song Select had that labeled as chorus one, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. But in so naming this as a group, it's not just naming the, the slide label, it's naming, uh, it's, it's creating a group that's named chorus with all of the slides of the chorus. And so I keep on talking and using this word group. Used to we, we have slide labels. And you still have that capability to have individual labels, but now we actually can work with groups. Reason being is that whenever we bring this in from Song Select, 
I have the chorus, I have verse one, verse two. This isn't necessarily the way I'm gonna sing it. And so if you're an experienced operator, you could follow along with the worship leader and just kind of click on the slides whenever they want them, whenever your worship leader starts to sing it. But if you're dealing with volunteers, very often you wanna create an arrangement of the song so they can actually just use the right arrow key or just you're creating an arrangement such that it's exactly the way that the song is gonna be sung for a given service. So what we can actually do is we can create an arrangement in ProPresenter 5. And I'll do that by opening the arrangement editor and coming under here and saying, add new arrangement. And I'm gonna call this arrangement verse one and verse two only, because that, for this given Sunday, all we're gonna sing is the verse one and verse two. And so now it brought in all the different groups, but I can actually take the chorus and drag that in after verse one, and I'll also take it in and drag it after verse two. And you'll notice as I do this, it's changing my slides that appear underneath here based on this arrangement. So I'll get rid of verse three, and now I'm done. So it's important to note that this is not actually changing the file, it's just creating a new look to the file, referencing all the same master slides that we started with. Um, so I can also create another arrangement very easily, just saying a new arrangement, I'll say V1 and V3 only. Again, very, very easy to do. I'll just uh, get rid of verse two, add the chorus after verse one, the chorus after verse three, and I'm done. Benefit of this is, obviously, you can have multiple versions of a song, multiple arrangements of a song, but it's all part of the same song file. And again, it's saved with the actual playlist instance of it. So if on a given Sunday you have a playlist and you're singing verse one and two only, but then the next Sunday you're singing verse one, three, and four, those preferences are saved as part of the playlist. So each instance keeps track of what version of or, or what arrangement you're wanting to use for that. Also, the benefit of this is that you're not stuck uh, editing multiple multiple slides, so if I notice that there's a misspelling in the first slide of the chorus, when I make that change, I only have to make it once and it'll appear in the same, it'll, it'll take effect in all the other places because it's all referencing the same base set of slides. Yeah. So a very, very cool new feature we're very, very excited about. So I've started here and I've got my presentation loaded in here, but then what, the next thing we want to do is to actually add some uh, visuals to this. So ProPresenter 5 is gonna ship with over 60 new um, visual backgrounds, and these are modern visual backgrounds. <clears throat> we can actually take these and just drag them up to the, uh, to the slides on which I want to make them active. You no longer have to hold down the command key. We actually recognize the difference between clicking on a slide to show it and actually dragging it to a specific spot. Wow. So I'm gonna click on that just to make it live and so I can demonstrate to you some new video effects that we've added into the software. We've had the hue and saturation, contrast, and brightness options for a while um, in ProPresenter 4. We've now enhanced this with additional video effects such as color filter. So I can actually choose a specific color. You'll notice it desaturated the video and added in this whatever color that I choose so I can make this look yellow if I want to. Or I can go to a sepia tone. Also I have color invert, gray invert, heat signature, whatever the heck that is. Um, <laughs> but it looks nice. And then I can also do an image blur. So I can, I can blur this out, which is great for worship environments. Let me just play this so you can see what that actually looks like. Again, this is affecting the image in real time. It's not actually just uh, doing anything to the original video file. It's just showing it in a different way. And if you compare this to the way that it appears in the original video clip is appearing in the preview, this looks very, very different. What this does, these video effects allow you to maximize the investment that you've made in your video clip library mm -hmm. so that you can make a number, a number of different changes to them and, and have you know, 20 different versions of the same video file, but they look entirely different to your audience. So, very powerful new video effects. Then, once we've done that, we start looking at um, what the slides are gonna look like as I make them live. So we've always had, ProPresenter's always had um, a beautiful cross dissolve, and basically we've had two different types of transitions, a hard cut or a cross dissolve. Mm -hmm. And I always joke about that, the reason that we've only had a cross dissolve transition is because if you gave people a lot of transitions, you always run the danger that they're actually going to use them. <laughs> so you, whenever you give people a lot of flexibility, you can create some really ugly things very, very quickly. But uh, as, as the, the power of computers have, has come a long way, we can now do some really, really interesting things with video transitions, so we've decided to, to roll them into ProPresenter 5 in a very cool way. So I'm, to demonstrate that, I'm just gonna run through some of these. And you'll notice as I'm showing you this, the text is remaining constant, 
It's just the video background that's changing. So that's what's actually transitioning. So transitions can be applied on a per layer basis. Since we have a video and image layer and we have a slide layer, we have a props layer, each one of those can have their own transition properties. We're also really happy in ProPresenter 5, we've, we finally allowed you, long question has been, can you set a transition for a given song? Because if you're playing a slow song, you want a longer transition than on a fast song where you might want to have hard cuts. Yes, you can do that. You can specify transitions on a per song basis or per document basis. You can also go as granular as a per slide basis if you wish to do so. So you can actually, um, if you wanted to, well, let me get a little bit further on. I'll, I'll might show you something that'll surprise you. So we have, uh, I've got another document here. I showed you the transitions for video backgrounds. We can also do some really, really cool effects with regards to text. So when I make this text slide live, Watch what happens. So we have a fly-in of that text, but if you look at the text, the text is still moving. So we've added this continuous motion effect, um, which is you know, kind of akin to motion lyrics that you might create in After Effects or whatnot, but it allows you to dynamically create these right within ProPresenter. So each one of these slides, I specify different transitions, and it's a beautiful effect. You wouldn't necessarily do this for the whole song. So you could, for example, do during the verse, you would do cross dissolves, but whenever you get to that big impactful first slide of the chorus, you would do that big fly-in of, of the words, and it's, it's, I think, very effective. You agree? I think it's excellent. Yeah, thank you. I love it. Appreciate that. It's fabulous. <laughs> We've been, no, it, it, really, this is great stuff because we have been asking for the ability to do, and I, I know our pro presenter operators are constantly adjusting sure. the fade times and the, the foreground and the background and adjusting all that stuff just to give you the best impact because, like I said, on a fast song, you want those transitions to be going like this. Absolutely. On a slow song, you don't want half seconds. Right. You want you two seconds. Have, you don't always have an operator that is that is capable of the kind of thing, and you know, yeah. it's, it's just a pain to actually have to go in and, right. and change all that stuff. And this way you can do it once in the song because you're going to play it the same time every same way every time exactly. so once exactly. you set it up it's there exactly so further uh, when I was talking about the media and the images, we've also added the ability, <laughs> if your church machine looks like my church machine, uh, you have media files thrown all about. And typically everybody puts everything on the desktop and a folder on the desktop. And then finally, whenever you've got 50 different folders on the desktop, then somebody comes in and cleans it up mm -hmm. by actually creating a new folder that says desktop stuff or things that were on the desktop and they move everything and then you lose the links and whatnot. So we've added a very, very new, uh, simple new feature in ProPresenter so that we can manage your library and manage your media automatically. And you can do that for all users, only for this user, that what that is is it's much like iTunes. When you drag an MP3 into iTunes, it just sort of has its own database in the back end and it manages that content for you. We can do that within ProPresenter. Furthermore, we can sync content across multiple machines. ProPresenter 4 introduced the ability to synchronize your presentations across multiple machines. Now you can actually synchronize your library documents, playlists, props, messages, basically the entire user experience that's happening on this ProPresenter machine, I can synchronize with another machine and get all their new files, etc. So it's pretty cool. If you do choose to manage your content, uh, we have another new feature that is hot folders. And the way that a hot folder works, I'll switch over to the finder here. And I have this folder that's called still images for WFX. And for purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna get rid of some of these. So there's just two images on here in this still images for WFX folder. Well, I'm gonna create a new hot folder in my video and image bin. And I'm gonna choose this still images for WFX folder. And when I choose that, it's going to import those two images. But what happens is it's a hot folder, so any time that I add additional images to this folder, they automatically show up. They automatically show up here. And you can have as many hot folders as you want. And I'm assuming that that hot folder could be on a network drive, so when Certainly. your creative director puts the announcement slides in there, they automatically they show automatically up. automatically appear. Uh, exactly. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. So um, we've done all this stuff for the worship uh, service or for the worship set. So you have all these beautiful effects and whatnot for songs. And all kinds of churches have been using ProPresenter for a long time for their, for their song lyrics, for any kind of video playback. But then inevitably, we've got so many churches that as soon as the pastor gets up, oh, let's switch to PowerPoint mm -hmm. because that's what the pastor uses. Yeah. So we went and started to look at why is the pastor actually using PowerPoint. And one of the main features is uh, that PowerPoint has that we've never had in ProPresenter is the ability to do bullet point reveals. So we decided to actually try and implement some tools that would be useful to somebody that's actually giving a message within ProPresenter. Then the first one of that is uh, the bullet point reveal. So just to demonstrate that, I've got two different bullet points. The two things, this is not a subliminal message in any way. This is just <laughs> sample text. The two things that you must do, number one is buy ProPresenter, and number two is download the ProPresenter 5 when it's released. So just, it's subtle hints or whatever. But the cool thing is, if you look at the interface for this, 
Um, I'll click off of that and come back. First time you click on the slide, it becomes orange, just like normal, but you'll notice these two little lights that appear underneath here. What that's indicating is the sub-stages of this slide. So the second click of the slide makes the first bullet live, and it lights up this first light. And then I click it again, makes the second bullet live. So it's a nice interface touch to show you exactly what your progress is on a given slide. Mm -hmm. So the second thing that we've done with regards to messages is we've added a fill in the blank function. If anybody has ever tried to create fill in the blanks with any presentation package, mm -hmm. you realize what a pain it is because you actually have to create two different versions of the slide and you underline the word in one and you try and create a blank in the other, but the yeah. spacing is always wrong when you're using the underlined character. Anyway, here we get the ability to actually do this. So to reach people, nobody else is reaching, we must do things nobody else is doing. Um, the way that we do this is very, very complicated. In the text editor, all we do is we select a word and we underline it. And we've set the text reveal to actually be, be fill in the blank. So we have bullet list and fill in the blank as our text reveal for this particular text box. And so just again, coming back here, now it's three blanks to reach people. Fantastic. So it's very, very easy to, uh, to add these things. <clears throat> so further, uh, we've now added the ability to, um, in our, if, we're, if you're doing scripture verse lookups, you can actually, it's always been the case in, in ProPresenter 3 and uh, 4, where you would actually <coughs> create a presentation of that scripture reference. Well, then you get this library that's just filled with all this different scripture, and it's very difficult in a playlist to kind of manage all that. So very, very simple thing, but we've added now the ability to copy scripture references to a current document. So I'm just going to add those scripture references. So all of your messages, all your message slides and whatnot just appear within the, the same presentation. Wow. So simple thing, but uh, something that's kind of gone a little bit popular. That's very cool. Very good. And, one more thing. There's one more thing. One more thing. One more thing. And, and, I, and I hope the demonstration of this will encourage you to actually Twitter about it. Uh, we've got a Twitter uh, function within ProPresenter. What this actually does is allows you to interact in real time with your church, uh, with your church audience to see what they're actually saying about a service, and so they can actually see what their fellow, you know, you can see what, what people's questions are or what particularly impacted them about a particular uh, sermon. So in this case, I've actually done a search on Twitter for the words WFX, and it's showing me all the latest tweets from WFX. And then I can moderate these. So here are my, here's my approved list, and I'll just clear this out by clicking the close box. And to add new tweets to it, I just click the green checkbox, and it adds that to my approved list. So when I press play, we actually show those, and for a given duration, I have it set for three seconds here. And using, again, those same kind of video, visual effects, I can actually change those. And I can specif specify a different template and build these different templates so I can have the Twitter picture and you know the timestamp and whatnot. So just kind of a fun new feature. Um, it's great for conferences and whatnot just to kind of <clears throat> see what people are thinking about the content that's actually being spoken about. But that's, uh, that's what we're demonstrating here at WFX. I've got, uh, there's certainly a whole lot more um, that's announced on our website as far as new features that you can check out. And um, hope to have a public beta very, very soon. We're actually gonna be releasing it for the Mac this winter and for Windows and uh, the PC in the spring and summer time frame, just as soon as we can. And we'll have upgrade pricing and whatnot available for existing ProPresenter users very soon, so. Awesome. Well, it looks fantastic. I think uh, I know a lot of people are excited about it. You guys have really been continuing to push the boundaries, make our lives easier for this stuff, and uh, appreciate all the work you're doing on this, and look forward to seeing it when it comes out. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Pro Presenter 5, coming soon to a Mac near you.